and welcome to Mostly Minnesota Music Podcast Edition. I'm Ann Tracy. I'm here with my co-host. Heather Baker. Yeah. And we are here with the, the women of Rose and Bull. We've got Lizan and Jalen. Welcome. Hi. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Yeah. I am excited to learn more about Rose and Bull. And you've got a super exciting um, event coming up on my daughter's birthday on September 17th. Woo, 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 baby. So, yeah, let's just start by yeah, telling us telling us about the event and kind of how you came to do something like a fashion show. Yeah. Um, I'll I'll start, Jalen. Yeah. So our event is on September 18th, um, Anne's daughter's birthday. Um, we're hosting it over at Style Society, which is in Northeast. They have a few locations, but that's their rental space. Um, and it's in a place called the club, their clubhouse. So um, it's really cool, kind of indoor outdoor setting. Um, afternoon show, it's gonna be a little bit different than we've had our previous events. Um, we'll do a vignette portion of things to kick off the event, which just means there will be live models in the scenery that Style Society will help us come up with. Um, and they'll be wearing looks from one of our designers. We have a total of, gosh, five, five designers, I think. Um, and so we'll start off with the vignette portion, and then we'll get into the runway show which will be two different designers so that is september would i say that september saturday the 18th mm -hmm. and it starts at one mm -hmm. right now the show is sold out but um <laughs> but there are there is a virtual viewing option so on our event right there is um, an option to donate if you want to. Um, and, it, and the virtual option is free, but there is a space for you to donate. We'll be donate, donating all of our ticket sales to the Link Minnesota organization and they help house homeless youth in the Twin Cities. They do. I have to admit, I know more about fashion than the then I know more about um, the link than fashion. That's my world. <laughs> I do a lot of, but Beth Folger, they do amazing work. They, I think they work with like some 200 youth and families throughout every year. They do it. So I, I applaud that selection. We're super excited to give back to the community. And, and during fashion week, we, what our goal is, is to serve the community. So all of our time and our resources are all volunteered everybody involved is donating their time from the models to photographers to designers everybody is just this is something that is near and dear to their hearts luckily it's near and dear to ours so it feels less stressful um, knowing that people align with our values so that's something we're really grateful for I was going to say, let's make sure to note that a hundred percent of your ticket sales go to the link too. I feel like Absolutely. that's important. It's so important, and it's something that, um, yeah, we're we're happy to do, and and we can do it right now. Um, it's not to say that it's not difficult at times, but we're really we're really trying to make it work. So if you could, you know, donate, if you can, it's really just, it just helps. Yeah. Well, and then the need at the link in places like that, I, I, I do a lot of volunteering someplace else in North Minneapolis, which is how I know Beth. And I mean, the need is just increasing so much, but it's, it's also nice to do something fun to support it. You know, and I think the the opportunity to lift up these um, these designers. Tell us a little bit about some of them. Well, 
we have um, Lamb Diggers Vintage, which is owned by Molly, who has been collecting vintage for over 40 years here in Minneapolis. So her collection is amazing. It's bountiful, um, has some of the best pieces ever. She spends all her time sourcing. Um, and then Black Navi is another vintage seller we have. Um, Kenny is the owner, also an amazing collection. Um, and then also my vintage um, called the Red Eye, which you can kind of see behind me. I've also been collecting a lot of vintage. Um, you know, you kind of fall in love with wearing it. I think a lot of us involved that love secondhand have been thrifting since we were little kids. And then eventually you just wear it so much. You're like, maybe I can make some money, but I also love this. And I also love rehoming a lot of these pieces that I find. Um, so I know that that's what I have in common with Black Navi and with Glam Diggers. Um, and then Project Von Anna is um, owned by Anna. She does jewelry. So that's not vintage, um, but she just makes these like amazing pieces of jewelry from hand. Um, just so stunning. So that is the vintage that you'll be seeing down the runway as along with like accessories like shoes and bags. And then all of that will also be available for purchase after the show because we're going to have everything going directly from the runway to a rack tagged with prices so that, um, you know, if people see something on the runway that they really fall in love with, they'll be able to purchase it and then support those local vintage sellers as well. So this event, really, we're just supporting the link. We're supporting these vintage sellers in the community, um, as well as the models and giving them an opportunity to walk in some amazing vintage garments. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, as a person that hasn't gotten a ticket, which sees all the beautiful stuff behind you, how, how can, are you making it available where the people that are virtually watching are able to buy somehow too? Yeah, that's a great question. I know that anything that doesn't sell directly from the runway will be available. Um, because I think we are having priority to the people that are in person to buy those garments. But I know um, that I will be doing maybe like a story sale of the rest of the stuff I have. So um, we'll be sure to tag those vintage sellers on our account the day of so that people are able to follow them, support them, as well as be able to message them and say, hey, I watched virtually, I saw this piece, would you still have it for sale or something similar? Um, that way people watching virtually will still, yes, be able to participate and support and hopefully follow these vintage sellers and find something in the future that they didn't think that they could even wear. That's what we really wanna do is showcase vintage in a high fashion way. Um, to make people excited and want to explore secondhand. Yeah. And I know that um, Selena Kane, a local milliner here in the Twin Cities, who's also involved in our show, it has a website. So you can go and shop on her website. Um, she is actually creating a couture line specifically for our show. Um, so that's going to be super amazing. And I can't wait to see what that, what that is going to look like. So our theme for the show is kind of a nod to the Alice in Wonderland, the Alice in Wonderland, the 1950s Disney version, just a nod to it. Cause we just love the colors and it's a little bit psychedelic. Um, so we just that's going to be our theme with all of the things we pull for it um how selena kane is designing her couture line um and just all around the the vibe for the show which i think is super fun will you be wearing that vibe too for your very own do you have I mean, I know you ladies, you you are very stylish. So I'm just thinking you got options and excitement around that for yourselves also. Yes, yes, we do. It's funny, we were pulling yesterday um, from the stuff I have and I'm trying to dress Lisa and I'm like, you should wear this and you should wear this. And then I have a dress that was gifted to me that I love very much. That's a psychedelic pattern. So 
we're trying to be a step ahead of it this year and kind of figure out what we're wearing. Um, yes, thank you so much for complimenting us and saying we're stylish, we hope. But <laughs> at the end of the day, then we're like, ah, but what are the models wearing? It's like, I'll wear a paper bag if the models look amazing. <laughs> it's all about them. <laughs> I, I like to see the fact that you guys are very conscious about the diversity all over the whole event and like you said that is a lot more work to do can you tell us how you went about it all the more hours or whatever but it is it should be recognized because it is such a harder process for yeah. you there we um so we don't go through any modeling agency for um, casting our models. We just, we believe in giving people the opportunity, um, representing the underrepresented is something we like to say kind of a lot, not to say that there aren't people involved who are involved in, um, agency. Sure. That, but that's not something that we look for. Um, in the past, when we've done casting calls, we have um, made a priority to cast BIPOC models. Um, and so also for finding designers, it was our goal to also include BIPOC designers this year, that it's just so important and, and especially in the fashion industry as a whole, it's easy to see the same kind of people being represented or kind of getting to the front of the line. Um, but we're hoping to lift others up in this process in, what, in whatever way that we can on the platform that we're allowed, we'll always put BIPOC first and LGBTQIA folk as well, all, all encompassing, right? We're just, we're trying to, we're really trying to do that. And it, and it is, it, it is a little hard um, to try and, and find those people and, and, and see who we can work with and, and ensure this is all done on a volunteer basis. So that's also another piece of things. So luckily we found people this year that, that are in it. Well, the great nod to all of you for volunteering, especially the even the people that you are lifting up because that takes their time too, you know, and the, the only way that we're gonna, it's, it's, it's hard to find the underrepresented voices because they're underrepresented. And the only way we're gonna change the dichotomy of it is by everybody giving a little bit, everybody. So I, I, as I said, I applaud you all for giving the, the platform, but I applaud the people for participating too, because it can be. Definitely, definitely. We, we're like just so grateful. Anytime anybody agrees to work with us, it's like, how many times can I say thank you in one sentence? Quite a bit, but I'm gonna say it every time because we are thankful. Well, and I think it's, uh, it's great to see new voices, see new voices, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> hear new voices, see new fashion uh, come from lots of different places. Because when, when you were really looking at kind of one fashion per year, you know, not those high waisted, they don't fit every suit, everybody, nor does low waisted. you know, if you have some variety, it's, it's better for all of us, you know. And yeah. I think vintage really, I think that's why we love vintage so much is that it, it's not just a cut and copy and paste and you know vintage doesn't put you in a box it really that's kind of I know how Lisan and I both um, from a young age it just gave us an opportunity to express ourselves in a different way um, and that just kind of grew and grew and grew so yeah we really like to show people that it you know vintage is for all body types vintage is for everybody it's for anybody we really want to make that accessible as well as inspiring so people feel like I'm a part of this community. The vintage community is not separate from me. I am a part of it and I can dabble in it. I might buy new here. I might buy used there. Um, and we like to encourage that as well because sometimes that can get a little stark and they think, well, I'm not completely sustainable, but you know, you can be in your own little ways for sure. <laughs> well, the sustainability is so important too. 
Yeah. And, and we were talking about how it's, it's all on a spectrum and everyone starts in a different place and you can only make small steps and, and also your resources too. Right. So, um, we can all fit under this umbrella of sustain, uh, sustainability. Yeah. What I've, and I've long gone to vintage or secondhand shops. I spent a lot of time at Goodwill, but I hope we'll say, to say to friends, you're not tied to a size when you go vintage shopping because a 1962 size six is different than a 19, you know, 2020 size two. And, you know, it might be from Europe. It might be from, I, I said that, that is the freedom to really say, this is for me or it's not for me, or I have to learn to sew. <laughs> yep story of our lives right Jalen we're just like okay the tag means nothing yeah, yeah. we are attached to our measuring tape yeah and we <laughs> just we we speak in inches that's yeah. all <laughs> <laughs> I love that idea I do but I, I just I have some friends who are like oh I'm like no let go of the size yeah yeah I totally agree no uh, uh, like it really doesn't matter and and when you're going into a thrift store for those people who are afraid look at all look at all the sizes I mean go in with some time of course right or you know start out I'm, on, I'm only going to look at dresses today or I'm only going to look at jeans today or I'm only going to look at blouses but look at the, the entire rack we're we're kind of pros and we can like go through and and we know we choose based off of fabric, based off of a design, based off of a shape. So it's easier once you're once you're in there quite a bit and and have your own methods. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, you can pull from a small one day, pull from an XXL the other day. It really, honestly, doesn't mean a thing. It, are you guys involved in anything else during the fashion week or looking forward to anything else? Because I didn't realize it is a full on week with events through the whole week. I'm like, wow, this is like the Super Bowl for me or something or the Olympics, I should say, because it's like sections. Can you tell me anything else that you're looking forward to, too? I know that there is a show going on called The Freak Show um, at Lovely Apothecary. That is one that I've been watching. And I know that Vintage is involved in that one as well. So I think that's kind of like a commonality between our two shows. Um, I also know that Evolve is going on, I think, a couple hours after our show wraps up. Um, so that should be exciting for some people to attend to that one. Those are just two that I've kind of had on my radar um, I don't know, Lisan, if you had a show that you have been. Yeah, looking. well, Fashion Week starts on the 12th. So it's a Sunday. And so right off the bat, 2 p.m., there's a show called Fashion Able 2.0. And then Dr. Zwack, who um, is actually having Little Man. I don't know if you're, he's a, he fronts a band and yep. he, he's playing. So it's this global launch party. Um, so that's happening right off the bat. On Sunday, there is something on Monday called Discover Your Inner Chic, Hip and Well After You, or Hip and Well You After 50 is what it's called. Tuesday, so these are all at different venues, and actually on the Fashion Week Minnesota website, there's a calendar. Um, but Tuesday, there's a really cool event happening, which interested me quite a bit it's called native visions and it's over at the lynn hall so if you take a peek over at the fashion week minnesota website they have ticket links available or attached to the actual event itself so you can also buy your ticket and then so it's they're just events throughout the entire week wednesday i am moody is putting something on energy gear also that same day um jalen mentioned the freak show on thursday golden runway which is a ma magazine from the u of m has a show that day as well 
um, Northwood Greens on Friday, and then on Saturday is our show, and there are a couple other shows happening that day, and Jalen mentioned Evolve, and then there's a live model sketch session in the morning, which is a panel discussion on fashion s sustainability, so there's a lot happening, um, but yeah, Fashion Week Minnesota, that website has a lot. Take a peek. <laughs> Take a peek. That's a... <laughs> That's a good note to, 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 yeah, it sounds like it's fantastic. I'm going to have, I'm gonna, I have three girls that would always be, we, yeah, they'd be all well into this. They'd be, well, you know, it's, yeah, we used to, so I, it's, I'm so glad that you got, well, I mean, Heather's much more in tune with fashion and what's going on with that, but I'm so glad that, that you all brought this. This is great. It's fantastic. I think it's, you know. Yeah, we're, we're super excited. Um, we always like to um tie in the music part of things because I'm a musician as well um as a stylist and producer so we're going to try to rope in a, a musician to perform during the middle of our runway um and we have a DJ who's a local DJ uh Greenery 808 um so yeah it's going to be it's going to be cool there's a lot of things happening would it be, Make it uh, be wish. Oh, go ahead. I was just kidding. Would, would it be a fair question to ask if you had anyone in mind for your musical interlude? Yay. Well, <laughs> last, or la I guess not last year, but a couple of years ago, we had um, Anna Stein, and she is out and about traveling the country right now in her camper or in her van, van yeah. life. Yeah. I um, so uh, we were hoping for, um, you know, a, a BIPOC musician. Um, and my go-to, of course, is Laura Hugo. Um, but she's already booked that day. So that, so it's still open. It's an open oh. ticket right now. Ooh. Well, we'll just throw that out Ooh. there. That's that. <laughs> I will. Uh, I'll, yeah. I'll look on the Shania Twain tribute tonight and see if there's anybody who needs to know about this opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I was looking at that too. And I was like, Ooh, okay. I'm going to have to look on your, on your IG and see if I can tap into any, anyone on there. Anyone. No, that's a, that's a great opportunity. I don't know why you don't go more local. I feel like you could do it too. No, that would, you'd be, you're doing too much. That's like making a, making your own wedding cake. You can't do that. I'm sorry. I, that's too much. It's like performing at your wedding, like yeah, singing a yeah. song at your wedding, which, which, you know, I actually did. So that is not, that doesn't mean anything. Uh, <laughs> that means there is a chance. <laughs> <laughs> so much. you're saying there's a chance so you've done it once before. There's a chance. <laughs> <laughs> I was like when you're speaking of this with music and fashion I'm like oh can, can we do more than just this one like I want it to happen more often but I know how much planning and prep and dedication it takes but as a lover of music and fashion you are speaking my language across the board i love what you're doing and thank you for all the hard work too yeah of course we are here to serve love that we Sorry. have also we've also always talked about doing something seasonal um but the scale of things so it would have to be something smaller anyway just Keep it, keep an ear out. Nice. <laughs> ear to the ground, because we're also in the middle of a pandemic. So mm -hmm. our runway show is actually going to be outdoors. So we're really hoping for good weather. Um, yeah, so that's, it, that's a whole other aspect of things that we're taking into consideration, keeping the health and safety of our community at heart as well. Always important. Thank you. I was going to say that adds, is that on your list of things to do to adjust or do you have another committee going, okay, this is what we're going to have to do or is that on you guys too? That's on us. There are parameters set um, from the Fashion Week Minnesota team um, and I think the only thing right now was the mask 
mandate for all of the shows, every show or every event will need to be masked. So that is something we can do and everybody has been doing. So it wouldn't be asking too much of our guests and our staff. Um, but anything beyond that, we'll, we're thinking about and we're putting into place. We'll be on the look for some fashionable masks now. Yeah. You guys can't fancy it up. I don't know who can. So that'll be <laughs> that that'll be just one more one more gift you can give to the community. Is, yeah. is how to wear a mask well and correctly. That would be great. That would be fantastic. I was gonna say, can we do one shout out too to your graphic artists for all your fabulous images and stuff? If you want to say that quick too, because I'm loving it. Yes, our graphic designer is uh, Jared. He is um, lead singer, front man of Buffalo Fuzz. And he also happens to be my husband. So it, he's just, his, his brain works in a different way. And the graphic that he just busted out for us was a labor of love. Um, and kind of a nod to all things groovy and psychedelic that he likes too. That's great. That's great. For folks who want to find you online, will you tell us how to how to find you both individually and collectively and a little bit about the event and you know where to find the event? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jalen, go ahead. Yeah. I mean, heading to our at Rosenbowl. Um our Instagram page is like an easy way because both Lisa and I's personal Instagrams are linked right in the bio. Um, so that's an easy way to find both of us um, as well as we love to push content out on that page, even outside of fashion week. Um, Lisa and I before COVID did a photo shoot. We styled a photo shoot for house salon um, and one of their um, like campaigns with, they did some wigs and some colorful wigs. So Outside of Fashion Week as well, I think people will be excited to follow along with us if we do any other projects or anything like that. And then as well in the bio, there is a link to our Eventbrite that Lisan mentioned, um, where people can um, choose to donate or opt into a virtual viewing um, that may be updated as we come closer to the show with a link for everyone to follow along. But I assume it will be, you purchase like, or you opt in to the ticket on Eventbrite and then we will email out a link for everybody to tune in on the day of the show. So yes, please give us a follow and support us. And we would love to follow you back. To and all I the believe we're also on Facebook. Yes, we right? are. Okay. Yeah. Same thing on Facebook at Rosenbowl. Um, we try to update it as much as we can. The Eventbrite information is also over there as well as a description of the show. Um, and the rundown, everyone who's involved. And then, yeah, please give all of them a follow as well and support them and shop them. We just really want to uplift them. And our models today, um, Lisan did a great job of showing all of our models, all 13 of them on our Instagram stories. Um, and we really want to uplift them and, and have all of, you know, everyone go and follow them so that we can support them along their modeling journey. Nice, nice. Yeah. Well, I have, might have to be virtual, but I'm looking forward to it. We're looking forward to it. Thank you so much for all of your work and, and, and for talking to us about it. it. It's fantastic. It's on the Welcome to Wonderland Vintage Fashion Show in Northeast Minneapolis at uh, Style Society Clubhouse, September right. 18th from 1 to 4. That's right. And is the, is the runway around 2? Yeah, around ish 2. We'll yep. see what happens. Go for a rock and roll too. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. Thank you so much for having us. It was great. Thanks.